Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today's video is another video in my Building the Shot series, which is a series where I break down everything I can about how a single photo of mine was taken. I show you the raw files, I show you how I processed the photo, and explain a little bit of my thought process as I got to that final image. In this video, I'm gonna go over this image on the screen here of Ebony from a recent trip that I took to Canada. This photo shoot was a lot of fun because I was not only teaching people how to take photos like I do with off-camera flash, but I was facing a little bit of an issue and I had to overcome that issue at the photo shoot. And the biggest issue that I was facing was that I was limited to the power of a single speed light, a Sony speed light. I'm not sure what the model is, but I'll find the model and link it in the description area below. But basically, I had to use that single speed light in a bright condition. It was around noon time in Canada at the time of the photo shoot, and I had to use that single speed light outdoors to take a photo. So I'll explain in a little bit what those challenges were and how I overcame them. But before I continue, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is a creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals and products I use and recommend, but also the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any product I talk about in today's video, check out the links that will be in the description area below and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. On the screen right now is just a shot of the natural sunlight that was existing in that shot. It's my ambient exposure shot before I add the flash. And it was really nice that day in terms of natural sunlight. It was very unfortunate, but the Eastern Canada had a little bit of fires and that actually carried some smoke in the sky where we were at in Vancouver and it provided a haze throughout the sky. So not only was the harsh sunlight at around noon very kind of diffused there's like a layer of diffusion there but it was also a little bit colorful so it was kind of like a little bit like golden hour throughout the entire day so that's actually something that you might see if you pick up on um, the rim lights that were going on on ebony on her hat and on her shoulders and the side of her arms the natural light was so good i did advise the photographers that were at that photo shoot to go ahead and take some cannons if they wanted to if they didn't get the transmitter yet but of course you want to be very courteous with the model and let her know when you're going to take a picture of her, or at least try not to take any unflattering photos of her while she was posing. So on the screen right now, like I said before, this is just without any sort of flash. And then I think I actually took another photo. Okay, this photo here, this is when I did add the flash and it was at full power. Usually when I'm using a speed light in very bright conditions, I do start off at full and if it's too much power, then I reduce it. But I did do an adjustment in the shutter speed here. So this previous shot here is at 1 3200th shutter speed and ISO 50 f1.2. And this next shot, I'm actually at 1 8,000th of a second now. And you can see that it is pretty dark. And one thing I did think when it comes to this photo, when I took it, is I thought, I was like, maybe the light did show up, but it's just weak or maybe it didn't fire. So just to be very, very sure, I did take a shot of the softbox so you guys can see that right here. And I wanted to really make sure that the light was firing. So that's what I tend to do when I kind of undecided if the light fired or not. I take a shot of the softbox itself and it was firing. I could tell it was firing from this photo. So then I continued. Let me go ahead and just show you guys real quickly. With this photo here, it did fire, but I didn't have enough power. So that was actually, like I said before, I wanted to describe some of the challenges with using a speed light. And one of those issues that you might face with a speed light in bright sun is not having enough power. So I did actually do two things at this photo shoot to kind of give back some of that power to my speed light so that I can have enough power to light the subject because this photo it does look nice but I did actually adjust it so you guys can see right here this is with the exposure just bumped up and the light on her is really nice and soft because I was using double diffusion but the issue with using two layers of diffusion is that every time that you diffuse the light it gets weaker by a stop or sometimes even more like I said before with the speed light in order to get some of that power back, I did actually take off one layer of diffusion. And I believe with this photo here, I had the light maybe like at three feet away, maybe a little bit more, three and a half feet. Another thing that you can actually do to get some of that power back with the speed light is to bring it closer. So I did two things. I removed a layer of diffusion and then I brought it really, really close to the subject, in this case, Ebony. And by doing that, I was able to get enough power. So let me show you guys real quickly. So this is when I was seeing if the light did fire or not. And then the next shot is gonna be with the light moved up closer and then one layer of diffusion removed so that's going to be this photo here this is completely unedited this is straight out of camera and i was actually really happy with how this shot looked like when i saw it on the back of my camera since i was showing people how i take my photos i did of course take some shots without the light firing so this next shot is going to be without any sort of light firing this is just the natural light that was there and it honestly like i said before it, the natural light was really good so i could probably work with this and make a like a natural light edit for you guys but 
I just honestly prefer the shots with the off camera flash firing. So I prefer that. So, you know, that's actually what's going to be in the next photo here. Again, with the light firing here, this is without the light firing. This is with the light firing and a little bit of wind hitting her hair and making it fly a little. And you can actually see the layer diffusion in this photo here. You can actually see it right there, kind of just flying down on the bottom there and you actually can see it a lot better in of course the behind the scenes which is going to be over here so you can see there's ashley with her uh, sunglasses or her glasses that get darker in you know bright sun there's some of the attendees here and you can see ebony right there that's the softbox that's the speed light that's the adapter to attach the speed light to the softbox and that's the layer of diffusion and that's somebody's hand taking some pictures and of course there's ebony back to this photo of course where the light is firing i got to the point where i really liked how the lighting looked like and the exposure so now it's just a matter of just taking a couple of variations of the same shot and i did you know obviously she's blinking there so ignore that but i did take some portrait orientation shots as well just to mix it up a bit and honestly to get some shots for instagram because instagram does favor portrait orientation so i did take a couple of these different shots and then there's this last shot with the light not firing and then i did take some more shots and here's one that i really did like but the only thing that i really didn't like about this photo was just her hand the fact that you can't see it i wish that you know her hand her sleeve was pulled a little bit back so you can see a little bit more fingers because right now it's just one finger poking through and that does bug me a little bit so that's why i did take a couple more other shots so here's another headshot I asked her to just smile a little bit, but then the hair got in front of her face. I asked her to smile again. And then finally, I liked this photo here, this headshot. So that was a kind of a winner image here. And the next couple of photos, I think it's with these next ones that I was doing a reel for Instagram. So I was doing the thing where I pick up the, or actually I record the setup, pick up my camera and then record the back of the camera and then take a shot. So that's going to be this shot this one and this one here, which I really did like. This photo was also a winner and this one was also a winner to me. So that's why I edited those two shots as well. And like I showed you earlier, this is the behind the scenes. And let me just show you how I processed that final winner shot in Lightroom and then Photoshop. Here is the photo completely unedited. And then here is the after where I did make adjustments. And there honestly is not a lot of adjustments on this photo. If anything, I just maybe changed the white balance from 5350, 14, to 5515 i did also increase the exposure just a tiny bit by 0.25 i did reduce the oranges because it was a little too saturated because whenever i boost the saturation all the way here on the bottom in this calibration section usually the oranges and the blues get a little bit too saturated so that's why i reduced the orange saturation over here i also did a little bit of sharpening from 40 to 60 and then the main things i think in the last two building the shot videos I kind of emphasize is that I did most of my changes to this photo with the adjustment brush. So let me go ahead and show you guys those right now. With this first adjustment brush, what you can see is that I did select this shaded area underneath her hair. So you can see the before and after. I basically just increased the shadows there. And then with this second one, I did give the eyes just a little bit of a pop. So this is going to be the before, this is the after. It's very, very subtle because her eyes were naturally just very bright. And I felt like if I added a little bit of extra pop like I usually do, then it would be too much and it would look fake. And that's something that I'm already anticipating whenever I post this photo that people are going to say, this is fake, you over edited the eyes. And I'll have the straight out of camera shot just to prove to them that I didn't do much to this image. But let's move on. For this layer, I did feel like the right eye was a tad bit too bright. So I did reduce it. And in the left eye, I felt like it was too dark, so I did brighten it. So I tried my best to get an even exposure on both eyes. So that's what I did there. I brightened one eye, or darkened one eye, and brightened the other. And with this last layer, basically all I did was I made her a little bit cooler because when I did adjust the white balance of the entire photo to be a little bit warmer from 5350 to 5500, I felt like she was a tad bit warm. So I just cooled her up just a tiny bit. And you can see exactly how that looks like right here. This is going to be the before. And this is the after it's very subtle but i felt like she was a little warm so i just added a little bit of cooler temperature and now i'll just move into photoshop and show you what i did there and on the screen of course is just the lightroom edit and let me just dive into the layers now the first thing i did was dodge and burn so this is the after this is the before i did give a little bit of extra contrast to this image but i tried my best not to overdo the dodge and burn so hopefully i got that balance there the next thing i did was adjust the colors so this is the after this is the before this is the after i basically added a little bit of warmth throughout the image to try to get a little bit of fall colors for this that was my goal when i was adjusting the colors then i did another layer of dodge and burn so this is the before this is the before 
This is the after. Again, something that I tried to aim for with this entire edit was subtlety. I didn't want to over edit this shot. So I'm hoping that I did that. And then the last couple of things I did was remove some distractions. So some flyaway hairs, that bunch of hair around her neck. So you can see the before and the after. This next layer here, I actually did darken the eyes a tiny bit because I felt like they were too bright. So I did a tiny little bit of burn with this layer. Then I felt like there was a little bit of reddish tint in her skin. So I just added a little bit more of the natural skin color in her cheeks there. Then I just removed this little hair right there on the side of her shoulder. I removed a little bit more distractions with this layer. And lastly, I did add a little bit of contrast and that's pretty much everything that I did for this photo. Like I said before, if you only have a speed light available to you, bring that light closer, remove diffusion. If you have two layers of diffusion and you can get that power back, but that's pretty much how I took this photo. If you have any other questions, if I did skip over something I didn't mean to, let me know in the comment section below. But for now, I'll just say take care. Actually, thanks to Adorama for sponsoring this video. And now take care and I'll see you guys in the very next video.